All right, folks, uh, glad to have everybody on again tonight for the Mountain Zoom. Tonight, we have a real treat. Uh, we have Mr. John McGregor with the Kentucky Debar Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources uh, out of Frankfort, Kentucky. And John is the state herpetologist, and he has a, a love for, for salamanders. Uh, as a matter of fact, he was telling me the other day that he has uh, chased them all over Black Mountain. Uh, if you're familiar with the Franks Creek and Eola area in Letcher County, uh, he, he talked about, uh, I think he had a Plymouth Duster he told me about that he drove from, from e the Eola area uh, back along top of Black Mountain back in the day. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to John and John's gonna uh, talk a little bit about salamanders tonight. John, it's your show, thank you for joining us. Okay, I hope you guys like looking at a lot of images. There are 22 kinds of salamanders in southeastern Kentucky, and so I'm just going to show you all of them. Uh, hopefully this won't bore you to tears. Uh, this is a, a hellbender, which is thought to be fairly rare, uh, but we're finding their DNA in the rivers all over Kentucky. This is a uh, we have an ad for hellbender sightings in our fishing guide, and this is a typical picture that I get from a fisherman. And uh, then they take a photo and then cut the line, and the salamander goes away. And uh, anyway, here's a this is a what a salamander looks like in a in a white bucket, uh, kind of a dark brown to blackish large salamander with folds of skin along the sides, and uh, these are big animals. They get up to about 30 inches long. Now here's looking at one um, at eye level in an aquarium. They're, they're really pretty neat, and they are uh, candidates for federal listing. And uh, there seems to be, that seems to be something that may be coming one of these years. But they seem to be doing okay in Kentucky. We're, we're studying them right now. Here's a close-up of the face of the hellbender. I think they're really neat looking. People think like they're ugly, but I, I like them. And here's another one. This is from uh, <clears throat> from the Green River drainage in central Kentucky. Now, uh, right now we're involved in a project working with Indiana to collect hellbender eggs and raise them in captivity. And Indiana is trying to restore hellbenders in, in uh, one of their rivers where they're almost gone. And then we're going to take some of those young and, and try to repopulate uh, parts of Kentucky as well. This is Hellbender Habitat, a uh, good sized river or stream, uh, fairly deep flowing water and large rocks. And here's how you look for them. Uh, you have scuba gear and bright flashlights and you shine, it, shine the lights under the rocks and look for Hellbenders. Uh, this is, uh, we found a male this was last week. They lay eggs in the fall, and then the male guards the nest. And uh, he's underneath a big flat rock in a burrow. And so we had located a, a male with eggs. And uh, this gives you an idea of the effort, you know, to do something like this. We had eight people in the river. And uh, so then you can collect a few of the eggs uh, after, if you can get past the male. And then he tries to block up the opening up with his body. So here are some hellbender eggs. They're pretty good sized. Uh, and we put those in the cooler and then they are now up at Purdue University in Indiana uh, where they hopefully will all hatch and turn into hellbender larvae. And then uh, after collecting the eggs, we also caught the male and uh, we're bringing him over to the bank and uh, measure him and check him for a chytrid and whatever. And then here's a hellbender being held by one of the researchers. So the other big salamander that you find in streams is called a mud puppy. Both of them are called water dogs by a, a lot of fishermen. A uh, mud puppy is pretty common and it's in really, it's in most large streams. Doesn't have the folds of skin on the side. It has uh, red gills which it's hard to see in this one right here, but the gills are folded against the side of the head, right where my pointer is. Um, if you put a, hell, a mud puppy in the water, then the, then you can see the gills a lot better. And these get to be uh, maybe 16, 18 inches long, 
and they are a lot more common than hellbenders, and they tolerate a lot worse water quality. So uh, usually when people send a hellbender picture, a lot of times it's a mud puppy because they don't realize there's more than one kind of water dog. Um, another salamander that's aquatic in uh, southeastern Kentucky is the red spotted newt. These are very, very common in woodland ponds of all kinds, uh, ditches, uh, old uh, strip mine ponds or mine reclamation ponds sometimes have thousands of newts in them. Uh, this is an adult. Uh, here's a pair of newts that, that are mating, and this is in a road rut up on top of Black Mountain. And when the newts mate, and this happens, can happen about any time of year, but usually it's in April and May, and the male clasps the female with his hind legs, and then he vibrates his tail, and it sends pheromones uh, to the female's nose, and then uh, that lets him lets her know that he's ready to mate, and then they go through a little courtship dance. And here, uh, the male is leading the female across the bottom of the road rut, and you can see that yellow thing right there. That's a spermatophore, which is a packet full of sperm and the male deposits that and then leads the female over it and then she squats down and picks it up with her cloaca so they have internal fertilization even though they don't actually physically mate. Now <clears throat> the younger stage of the red spotted newt or eastern newt is called a red eft and these are terrestrial and they live in the woods and the red eft stage can last anywhere from a year to six or seven years and if you're out in the woods in southeastern Kentucky particularly after a rain you'll see these red f's walking around on the forest floor their skin is pretty toxic and there isn't anything that will eat them so uh, they're they're pretty safe from predators this is one up on top of Black Mountain uh, now another salamander that's probably I think the rarest salamander in southeastern Kentucky is the Jefferson salamander. And I have seen only one of these from southeastern Kentucky, and it was actually a preserved one. It's in the collection at uh, University of Pikeville. Of course, back when I looked at it, it was called Pikeville College, and they actually found it on campus. Um, we have not been able to find another one in southeastern Kentucky, but these Jefferson salamanders have been found on High Knob in Virginia. And I'm pretty sure they are elsewhere in southeastern Kentucky. If I actually lived down there, then I would drive the roads on rainy nights in February, and I bet I could find some of these. Because they uh, travel to the breeding ponds in February when it's warm and rainy, and uh, you often see them crossing roads. The Jefferson is a, it's a brownish salamander with a lot of blue spotting on it and really long toes, like a it, it would be a piano player if it were human. And then here's a juvenile Jefferson salamander, and they have a lot of a lot of blue spotting on them. A really common large salamander in southeast Kentucky is the spotted salamander. These guys get quite large, uh, seven, eight inches long, uh, pretty much black to brown with uh, a double row of bright yellow spots. They live in the woods and they breed in uh, woodland ponds, roadside ditches, uh, and road routes created by ATVs and other vehicles. So um, they'll breed just about anywhere that it's uh, standing water. And here's another one. There's a lot of variation in, in color in these things. Some of them have orange head spots like, like this guy here, and others have yellow head spots. And here's a young one. Uh, the small ones are don't quite look as obvious, but uh, this one's about a year old. And here are two that had just transformed from the larval stage that I found on the road one night. Um, you can just see the yellow spots are just starting to form on them. These guys are probably just a few days out of the larval stage. And then here's one that's still a larva that I uh, dip netted out of a pond. So you can see how much variation there is. And, uh, sometimes people have a lot of trouble identifying salamanders. Um, a little bit about salamander eggs. 
the, uh, the Jefferson and the Spotted that both breed in ponds and they both lay these egg masses in February and March. These are Jefferson eggs. An egg mass is about the size of a golf ball usually. And each mass has oh, 10, 15 to maybe 30 eggs in it. And they, they're in the water for about a month before they hatch. Uh, if you lift up, a, pick up a Jefferson egg mass in your hand, it flattens out in your hand. They have kind of a, a weak outer jelly. And this, these are spotted salamander egg masses, and they're bigger, uh, maybe tennis ball sized. And the jelly is real firm in a spotted salamander egg mass. Um, you, if you pick it up, uh, it holds its shape in your hand. So uh, that's the easiest way to tell the eggs apart. There's something in interesting about spotted salamanders. Uh, there is a, a species of algae that's associated with the salamander eggs. And you can see how these are kind of green on the inside. And the algae grows inside the egg, and it produces oxygen that lets the larvae develop faster. You see each egg has a larva in it. OK, another salamander that's related to those two is, is called a marbled salamander. And it's a kind of a stubby, black, good-sized salamander, maybe four inches long with white cross bands. This is a male. Uh, you can find these this time of year. Marbled salamanders breed in the fall. And uh, they travel to a, a dry pond bed that will fill up with water later. And uh, the males are there now, and the females will probably arrive uh, during rainy nights in, in the next week or so. Uh, then the females get to the pond and they lay eggs like under a log or inside a log or under leaf litter or uh, uh, just someplace where they can make a cavity in the soil. And then the female stays with the eggs until the, the pond fills up with rain and they hatch. So these are females with eggs. Uh, so the eggs usually hatch out by sometime in November, but I've, I've seen the eggs sometimes still in December when we had a, a really dry fall. And then this is a newly transformed young marbled salamander that would be really hard to recognize if you didn't know what it was. But after, after a few weeks, they develop that pattern and they're recognizable. And here's a Here's a marble salamander in a dry pond bed. Uh, it was under a log, and I just thought it was neat looking, so I took his picture. And here's one eating an earthworm. This is a once in a one in a million photograph. I was over at Mammoth Cave National Park with Bill Moore a few years ago on a rainy night, and we're driving around, and this one was just right up the edge of the road in a parking lot, swallowing an earthworm. So I got one picture, and then the worm was gone. Okay, in southeastern Kentucky, uh, pretty interesting species to look for is the green salamander. This is green salamander habitat. They like sandstone boulders, sandstone outcrops, and cliffs, and they live in rock crevices. Like, you know, you, so you to look for them, you look in there, you look in there, you look in there, you trying to flashlight in those crevices, and you see what you can find. Uh, this is a an old campground up on top of uh, Pine Mountain in Harlan County where I look for green salamanders sometimes. Now this is how you look for them. This is Tracy who works with me and uh, she has just found three green salamanders in that crevice. That's at uh, Cumberland Falls. And this is what you see when you look in there. Uh, Sometimes you can tease one out with a stick, but most of the time when you shine a light on them, they, they're not going to come out. and They just kind of go even back further than they were. Um, but pretty neat salamander. It's the only salamander that is actually green in, uh, in this part of the country. So here's some different views of green salamanders. Now, in July, the females lay eggs, and this is a female laying eggs in a rock crevice, and just laying her first egg. And this was, I think, uh, yeah, this was 18th of July at Cumberland Falls. The female turns upside down and plasters her eggs to the ceiling, 
of the rock crevice, and then she stays there and broods the eggs uh, until they hatch sometime in uh, late September or October. So here's a female with eggs um, in a rock crevice. It's really hard to light these up sometimes. I had to pile up rocks and stand on them and hold a flashlight, and it's really hard to get a good photo. And then this is um, after the eggs have hatched, the, the female sometimes stays with the young. So here are two young ones, one there and one there, and they are both upside down in the rock crevice, and then the female is right side up. So that was pretty cool, and I really couldn't get a good picture of it. And here's what a green salamander looks like when you get them all the way out. And here's another one. Neat looking salamanders. They have squared off toes, flattened bodies, and they're really well adapted to live in crevices. Sometimes they live under a loose tree bark on a, on a log or a dead tree also. Okay, if you go down and start looking along the creeks, um, that's a good place for salamanders. And here are several kinds that you find along streams and similar places. This is called a southern two-line salamander. It's normally bright yellow with a few black dots, and then there's a, there's a dark, long dark stripe along each side of its body. And here's another uh, southern two-line salamander. Now during late fall and winter, the uh, that's the breeding season for them, and the males get these uh, extremely swollen heads. It's part of just part of physiology. And uh, so a, a breeding condition male is really easy to recognize. And that's one from actually from right outside of Oven Fork in uh, southeastern Kentucky. And there's a kind of a close up view of his head. Now here's another two line salamander. Some of them are, are more brightly marked than others, but they're all pretty much yellow with a uh, with a dark stripe of some sort on each side, and very common species. And here is a larva of a two-line salamander. They have aquatic larvae that live in small streams, and it, it's about a 12 to 15 months from the time the eggs are laid in, uh, in April until the time that the larvae grow and transform into young salamanders. Another yellow salamander that's in southeastern Kentucky along streams is a long tail. Uh, it's a little bigger than a two-line salamander, and it has these vertical bars uh, on each side of the tail, and that's the character you use to recognize them. And they are extremely variable also, and I'll show you just several photos of uh, long-tailed salamanders. Some of them have more black than others. Some of them have a little bit of orange tint to them, but most of them are, are bright yellow. Uh, this is one from Carter Cave State Park in northeastern Kentucky. That's about as typical as a long-tailed salamander gets. Uh, this is sometimes they're real dark and they can change color. You can catch one that's dark like this during the day in the woods and you put him in a Ziploc bag and a cooler and by the time you get home he looks he looks totally different. You know the Dark color disappears, the belly turns yellow. I mean, it's, it's amazing what they can do. Here's one from Western Kentucky. Now another relative of the long tail is the cave salamander. It's not common in uh, Southeast Kentucky. I've only been able to find these on Pine Mountain where the limestone outcrops between Jellicoe, Tennessee and, uh, and Pineville. Um, they somehow, they've never been able to make it across the, uh, the gap where the Cumberland River flows through Pine Mountain. So when you get into the caves in, in, on Pine Mountain in Harlan and Letcher County, they don't seem to have cave salamanders. They have long tails, but not caves. So cave salamander is bright orange. Uh, the tail is spotted all the way down. It doesn't have the uh, vertical bars on it. And you find these in caves, um, on in crevices on outcrops, sometimes along creeks. And uh, I've taken a lot of these photographs just by going out at night, which I like to do on, on a wet night after a rain and salamanders are out walking around. And you can get some pretty interesting photos. 
a cave salamander has kind of a pinkish or whitish belly. Uh, kind of the only salamander that has a belly like that. And here's a close up. This is a male during the breeding season, and these two projections on the nose are they're called cirri, and uh, they develop during the breeding season, and then the male uses those to detect a, a female that's in breeding condition. And then the male has a mental gland, which is a swelling on his chin, and then that has the pheromones in it that uh, convinces the female that it's time to mate. Here's a cave salamander that's climbed up on a wet pokeweed leaf at night. I like cave salamanders, so I have a lot of photos. Now, just because a salamander is red doesn't mean it's a cave salamander. This is a spring salamander, totally different species. These are kind of heavy bodied. They live in springs and seeps and long streams, pretty big. They get to uh, well, maybe four and a half, five inches long, uh, and they, they feed uh, often on other salamanders, but they can eat about anything. I had one in a Ziploc bag that swallowed a spring peeper one time, which I found pretty amazing. The Kentucky spring salamander is kind of salmon colored and it has two rows of black spots running down, one on each side of the back. And uh, then the other subspecies of spring salamanders look different. Here's another Kentucky spring. This one's more of a salmon colored one than the one I just showed you. This one's almost yellow. It's from uh, <clears throat> kind of West Central Kentucky uh, Green River wildlife area. And this one's a gravid female. You can actually see that uh, yellowish coloration. That's She is full of yolked eggs. So uh, she is getting ready to lay eggs fairly soon. And here's some photographs of spring salamanders taken at night on rainy nights and see there's a lot of variation this one has has a lot more spots on his back than uh, most of them do and this is another female you can see the uh, yolked eggs inside of her and here's an adult and a larva the uh, spring salamander larva has red gills um, some of them are pale colored like this one uh, they live in caves and also underground and in springs and in creeks and the larval period lasts sometimes three or four years before they reach adult size. And here's a, a spring salamander larva just to give you an idea what it looks like. Here, uh, here's a spring salamander uh, photographed at night on the forest floor. And here's another one. Okay, another similar salamander is a, a red salamander. Um, looks a lot like a, a chunky version of a cave salamander or a spring salamander. Um, these are pretty common in southeastern Kentucky. Um, I almost always find at least one when I'm out. And if you drive roads on rainy nights, like in uh, October, November, uh, March, April, you'll often see these crossing the road. But it's hard to find one during the day. This one was up on Little Shepherd Trail under a under a big piece of cardboard, someone had discarded at a campground. Uh, here's another northern red salamander. They have uh, numerous black spots, and the eye is yellow or orange in the iris. So here's a, an old adult from uh, Fort Knox <coughs> in western Kentucky, same species. And then this one was found, uh, James Kaiser found this one in the Franks Creek drainage in Letcher County. That's about as dark a red salamander as I've ever seen. Uh, in some of the older books, they're also called the purple salamander. And here's one in a cave in uh, Eastern Kentucky that was hiding down in the sediment on the cave floor. That was kind of cool looking. Now, a red salamander almost always has black on the lips. So that's a good thing to look for. If it looks like it has black lipstick, it's it's a red salamander. And here's another one, just kind of looking them in the face. 
there are two from uh, the same creek in, in Garrett County, which is in the bluegrass region. And here are the, it's what the larvae look like. Uh, kind of similar to a spring salamander larva, but a lot more spots on them. And uh, these also have a multi-year uh, larval period in streams. Here's one that's just starting to transform. So when they first lose their gills, and the gills are right there, just receding, um, it takes usually a few weeks for the red color to come in. Now a similar uh, salamander, another red one with black spots, this is called a mud salamander, midland mud. The thing you look for here, it has dark eyes, it doesn't have that yellow pigment in the iris, and it doesn't have black lips. And the dark spots are much more numerous and scattered on a mud salamander. And they're real variable. Now this is one from uh, Jessamine County, which is where I live, south of Lexington. The ones in the bluegrass pretty much all look like this one. Uh, this one's from Adair County, which is in west central Kentucky. And here's one from Bullock County, which is over near Louisville. This is about as few spots as you ever see on a, a mud salamander. And then this one, this is probably the prettiest mud salamander I've ever found. This was at Bad Branch in Letcher County. Some of you probably know where that is. It was uh, up above the falls by the lake. There's a really nice mucky area, uh, but sometimes you get lucky and find a mud salamander if you look long enough. Found this one at night in the rain. Uh, getting to another group here, this is called uh, a four-toed salamander. It's a really small species, maybe four inches long total, kind of skinny. Um, it has a squared off snout and it has a usually a little constricted area right at the base of the tail. And when you grab one of these, a lot of times the tail will break off right there and wiggle around. And uh, that's a, that attracts the attention of a predator and the salamander gets away and grows another tail. Now, these things blend in really well with the leaf litter. They live in the woods, and it's almost impossible to find one outside of the breeding season. You just, they're there, and you just can't see them. Um, <clears throat> here's another one. This is pretty, this is a brightly colored one. Um, the main thing to look for is the squared off snout, and then the belly is white with black spots, and that's really unique. Um, so here are two that uh, I found the same night. And when when they defend themselves, a lot of times they'll curl up uh, like a spiral and flip over and show that belly. And I'm not sure why they do that. Um, they must taste really bad to something. Um, but it, it kind of makes them easy to see when you find one in the woods and you accidentally disturb it and it rolls over. Uh, here is a... Uh, here are a couple of females. Uh, they lay eggs in uh, usually April, early May, and they go to the edge of a pond and they lay eggs in a rotting log or a clump of moss right at the edge of the water. The female turns upside down and lays her eggs and then she stays with them. The bottom female, you see how heavy she is, she's pregnant or gravid. The top female was laying eggs when I flipped and I lifted up a piece of this log, and so uh, she was still upside down from laying her eggs. I think she was pretty indignant, so I put the uh, piece of log back and let her do her thing. Um, this is a male four-toed salamander, and you can see this swollen place on the chin right here. This is the mental gland that uh, the male uses during courtship to uh, excite the female. And here's the belly of a four-toed salamander. And you can also see the four-toed is unique because it has only four toes on the hind foot. So one, two, three, four. All the other salamanders we have in Kentucky have five toes except the mud puppy. It also has four toes. And this is a, 
This is a place where a four-toed salamander laid her eggs uh, right at the edge of the water. Sometimes there will be eight or ten nests in a clump of moss like this. And to look for them, you just kind of dig through the moss. And here's a female that's that's with her eggs. Um, the eggs are white. Um, and when they finally hatch, which is usually in May, uh, then when, when you get some rain, the larval salamanders wiggle down through the moss and drop into the water. Here's a four-toed salamander just showing the blunt snout. Um, now we're going to get into a group, the, uh, the woodland salamanders. And these salamanders are totally terrestrial. They lay eggs on land. There's no aquatic larval stage, um, and they live mostly in wooded areas or rock crevices. This is <clears throat> this is a northern slimy salamander, which is one of the most common uh, woodland salamanders. The spots on the back can be white or brassy, or these are even greenish on this one. And then a lot of times, though, there's white uh, spotting and lichen-like markings along the sides. But anytime you see a black salamander under a log in the woods, it's probably going to be a slimy salamander or something related to it. Uh, here's like looking at one close. Um, I find these active at night, walk around with a flashlight, look on, on the forest floor, and I also find them under rocks or logs during the day. Uh, if you try to pick one of these up, uh, they have a sticky skin secretion. It gets all over your fingers and then eventually it turns black and you can't wash it off. It just has to wear off, which takes a few days. So that's kind of disconcerting. So you might want to think twice before you you know, pick these things up. Uh, you recognize a slimy salamander also by his black throat and chin. There's a related species that has a, a light throat. And then here's a male slimy with a mental gland. It's a uh, in a slimy salamander, it's fairly small. And uh, they breed mostly October through uh, March, sometimes into April and May. And then the, the mental gland kind of shrinks down in the in midsummer and then it gets large again in the fall. Uh, here is a courting pair of uh, slimy salamanders that I found at night. Um, this one is the male, the smaller of the two, and they have an elaborate courtship ritual, and then he sways his hips back and forth, and he actually, he slaps the female with his mental gland and gets her attention, and then he walks in front of her and sways his hips, and then she puts her head right above his hips, and then he leads her on a walk and uh, on the forest floor, and then he stops and deposits a spermatophore and then leads the female over and she squats down and picks it up. It's a really neat thing to see. I've only seen it a few times. But uh, here's here's the male leading the female. And where I was watching this, there was a lot of vegetation and they kept disappearing. So I uh, couldn't watch the whole thing. But if I had disturbed them, uh, it would have interrupted them. Now, this is the only time I've ever seen the eggs of a slimy salamander. Uh, this is a female with her eggs. This was in an abandoned coal mine in uh, Floyd County, Kentucky. And I found these um, in, it was right before Thanksgiving. It was in November. Uh, they lay eggs usually in uh, late summer and then uh, the eggs will hatch late fall, uh, sometimes early winter. Just laid on a, on a ledge in an old coal mine. Now, there's another species called a Cumberland Plateau salamander, uh, which is Plethodon kentucki. It's actually named for the state of Kentucky, and it looks a lot like a slimy. And uh, <clears throat> so I'm going to show you how to tell the two apart. This is a, both of them together. The one on the left is a slimy, and the one on the right is a Cumberland Plateau, Plethodon kentucki. Uh, the things, things you look for, the slimy has bigger white spots on the back as opposed to small white spots. Uh, the Cumberland Plateau has a flatter head as opposed to the thicker head on a slimy. 
And then a slimy has a thicker tail with more white spots on it. So looking a little bit closer, uh, you can see the difference in the head shape. This is a Cumberland Plateau, really flat head and really prominent eyes. And this is the slimy down below with a thicker head and eyes not so prominent. And you can see the differences in the size of the spots. And then here's just another view of the two side by side showing the difference in the head shape. But boy, you have to look at a lot of sound manners before you can see this. And some people never really pick up on it. Now here's a Cumberland Plateau salamander, Plethodon Kentucky, uh, showing the white chin and white throat. Uh, this is a really typical one. It's too bad they don't all look this distinctive, but sometimes it's hard to tell what you're looking at. Um, this is a breeding condition male, has a big, large, big mental gland. Uh, probably twice the size of the slimy's mental gland. And also, if you look at the hind feet, there's a lot of webbing on the toes on a Cumberland Plateau salamander, and a slimy doesn't have that. But you have to really look closely. Um, so here are some uh, Cumberland Plateau salamanders. Here's a male from uh, the top of Pine Mountain in uh, Harlan County. Uh, this is a... Uh, this is one active on the forest floor at night from the top of Black Mountain in Harlan County. That's a, this is a good place to go at night and just walk along the, the road to the fire tower and you can see these things prowling around on the forest floor. It's really cool. Uh, here's one down at Franks Creek in uh, Letcher County. Now, probably the rarest salamander in the whole state of Kentucky is the yellow spotted woodland salamander, uh, which is only recently described as a new species. Before it was just called the, the yellow spotted variety of whirly salamander. Uh, the yellow spotted woodland salamander lives pretty much on sandstone and shale outcrops. Uh, they hide in rock crevices during the day and then at night they come out and prowl around hunting for insects. Um, this is an adult. Uh, they are very flat bodied, light brown. They have a double row of yellow spots, kind of like a spotted salamander, but they're built way different. A spotted salamander is really chunky and fat, and a whirly salamander, a yellow spotted woodland salamander, is extremely flat bodied. Um, I've only found a few of these in my life. So, uh, and we only have seven locations in the whole state of Kentucky for them. And there are, I think there's one location known in Virginia and uh, quite a few in West Virginia and one in Tennessee. So uh, this is a pretty rare species. And that's kind of another closer view. They have those yellow spots and then they have a little bit of white spotting on low on the sides. Um, really flat heads, really adapt, adapted for living in rock crevices. And sometimes you find a really old uh, yellow spotted woodland salamander and the yellow spots start to fade and, they, and these, this guy is almost completely brown. You know, it would have been hard to know what he was, except I found him in one of my uh, yellow spotted woodland salamander places. Another terrestrial salamander, and this is a common one, it's called a ravine salamander. Uh, long and skinny, kind of built like an earthworm with uh, little stubby short legs. Um, these are really common in uh, southeastern Kentucky, but they're pretty much active only during cold weather. Uh, when, it's, when it's 80 degrees or warmer, they, they go deep in the ground and they don't come up until things cool off. So uh, uh, this time of year, it, they're just starting to come out of the ground and you can find them. I look for them by you know, just digging through the leaf litter or turning over pieces of bark or logs in the woods. Now on Black Mountain, the elevation is uh, over 4,100 feet and it's cool there uh, all summer and you can actually find ravine salamanders in the summertime sometimes, but that's the only place in Kentucky where you can find those. 
Uh, here's a ravine saddle. They climb up on uh, vegetation sometimes at night, um, probably hunting for insects, but they might also be trying to get away from whatever ringneck snake on the forest floor is, is wanting to eat them. So this guy's up on a blade of grass uh, at night. Uh, some of them are frosted with uh, gold like this one or silver, and they, they're really pretty. Uh, and you wouldn't recognize that that's the same thing as, as that first one I showed you, but it is. They're uh, really slender, uh, less, less big around than a pencil, and uh, really short-legged. Now we're going to get into the dusky salamanders, uh, which this is one of my favorite groups of salamanders. We have four different kinds of dusky salamanders in southeastern Kentucky. And this is a northern dusky salamander, uh, usually has some kind of a uh, band running down the back that's kind of bordered by dark pigment. Um, these are common along small streams. And duskies almost always have that bar between the eye to the angle of the jaw. Uh, here's another uh, northern dusky salamander. You can see the, the white bar there. The hind legs are really large compared to the front legs. These guys can jump really well. So uh, it kind of makes them fun to catch. And here's a, another northern dusky. There's a lot of variation in color. But once again, you're looking at a, a band down the back that's got a, a border. This is kind of a wavy border. This one was in a seep at uh, Cumberland Falls. And then here's an old, an old male that most of the markings have faded on. So you might not think that these are all the same species, but they are. And here's another old male. At least this one still has the, the bar behind the eye. So. These are found, you find them along creeks, uh, usually under a rock that's right at the edge of the water or partway in the water. So where you find them can be a clue as to what they are. Uh, here's a, another northern dusky, and this is a female that was guarding her eggs. This is an unusually pretty one. This was in Clay County, Kentucky. And here are the eggs up close. The uh, larvae are developing inside the eggs, and then when they hatch out, they have little bitty stubby gills and uh, eventually they will make their way to the water. Um, often what happens, and this is a female whose eggs hatched and she stays with the eggs and then she stays with the young and they can use her body to have enough moisture to keep their gills moist until she either takes them into the creek or you get a rain and they can go into the creek on their own. Pretty good parental care. Uh, here's a dusky salamander larva. See the little stubby white gills. So they're not bushy like the uh, gills you would see on like a spring salamander or a red salamander. Okay, in southeastern Kentucky, a really unique salamander is the Black Mountain salamander, named for Black Mountain, but it's found uh, in a fairly limited range in eastern Kentucky. Uh, part of West Virginia, the, the mountains of West, Western Virginia, and uh, extreme Northern Tennessee. This, the big one here is a black mountain salamander. It's a huge species. Uh, they get to six and a half inches long and big and robust, and they're so active, it's really hard to catch a, a big adult when you find one with your bare hands. But the things I look for, uh, not much of a pattern, uh, there's no white spotting on the sides, and this is a northern dusky here, the small one, and see the northern dusky has a lot of white spotting. Uh, also, the uh, black mountain salamander has black toe tips. Hard to see this in this picture, but they have black friction pads on the underside of the toes that they cling to the rocks in these cascading streams, and a northern dusky does not have the friction pads. So here are three Black Mountain Duskies from the same creek. Um, there's a lot of variation in these things. Um, this is one in an aquarium and you can clearly see the, the black toe tips, front and hind feet, and you see there's no uh, white spots on the sides. 
here's a larva of a, a black mountain salamander. And they're, they're very variable. This is one that's just covered with spots, which is kind of unusual, but you find them like this. And I found quite a few like this on High Knob in Virginia. Uh, here's one that's just almost plain brown. This is what you usually find on Black Mountain in uh, Harlan County. They blend in really well with the, with the rocks and the creeks on Black Mountain. And that's one place where they're almost always all the same color. You can see, see the dark toe tips on this guy. Here's one from Whitley County. Uh, never seen anything quite like this one. This is the only one I've ever seen this color. Um, here's another Black Mountain Dusky. You can see the dark toe tips. And here's a juvenile. Uh, the juveniles have orange spots on them. And this is one looking out of a crevice at night. Uh, one of my favorite things to do on Black Mountain and elsewhere in Southeast Kentucky is go out at night and go to seeps and springs that are uh, fairly close to the road. And the salamanders are have their heads sticking out and it's a really neat time to go and photograph them. So uh, here's one along Kentucky 179 in Harlan County at a cascading waterfall. And there's another, this is one at, uh, at a bridge along Looney Creek in uh, Harlan County. And another one. I like looking at them. Uh, got lucky one night and I had some uh, students and we were out netting bats uh, in eastern Kentucky over a creek and uh, students are, you know, they often don't pay much attention to what you're doing. And uh, this girl all of a sudden said, hey, there are two, two lizards here that they're, and they're fighting. And I went running over there and it was two male Black Mountain salamanders that were in a territorial battle. So that was pretty cool. Only time I've ever seen that. And then I had to catch both of them, make sure they were both males. Um, okay, An another type of dusky is called the seal salamander. Um, it's characterized by having, uh, it's also got black toe tips. It's got a, almost always a black spot on the back of the head and worm-like markings. These guys are really variable in color and they can change color. Uh, at night, they can be light colored like this. During the day, they can be almost black or almost brown. Uh, seals almost always have color in that uh, light bar behind the eye. It's al almost always orange or yellow. That's a pretty good character. And they have white spots low on the sides like a, uh, like a Northern Dusky and then the black toe tips. So here's a really big seal salamander. Um, that's about as colorful as they get. And here's a, here's a large uh, pregnant female. And here's a seal in an aquarium and you can see the, the black toe tips and the white spotting along the sides. These can sometimes be really hard to tell from a, a black mountain salamander. And here's a, looking at a seal pretty close up. And another one. Something, uh, if, you, if you know of a dripping rock face um, that pretty much has dripping water all year, that's a really good place to look for seal salamander eggs. Um, this is a, an area near the Nata Tunnel in uh, Powell County, Kentucky. Uh, in, uh, it's, you can go there in July and August and you can find, the seal salamander is barely visible here. She's right here, but she plasters her eggs to the ceiling where water runs over them and then she stays there and broods the eggs uh, all summer long. Uh, here's a, another female brooding her eggs. The eggs are bathed in cold water all the time uh, until they hatch. It's kind of a neat thing to see if you know of a place that's like that. You can go there in uh, say late July or August. Okay, the last <coughs> uh, dusky salamander and the last salamander I'm gonna talk much about in Southeast Kentucky is the uh, Allegheny Mountain Dusky Salamander. This is a small, 
species, extremely variable. The thing you look for is the round tail. All the other duskies have a like a flattened tail, but the, the Allegheny Mountain Dusky has a, the tails round at the base and round all the way down its length. This is kind of a typical adult. There's almost always a little bit of bronze right on the eyelid. And that's a pretty good field character. Um, here's a kind of a typical adult, um, not real colorful, but some of the smaller ones can be really gorgeous. Uh, this one kind of looks like a two-line salamander, but it has the big hind legs like a dusky and it has that, that bar. And you can see the little bit of bronze uh, on the eyelids. This is another one. This was from uh, just outside of Oven Fork, Kentucky. And here's a pregnant female in uh, <clears throat> in the spring, and you can see she's really distended with eggs. Um, these salamanders lay eggs probably in uh, April or May. I have never been able to find a nest in Kentucky. And there's evidence that they also have a nesting season in the fall. So uh, I have found females where you can see the eggs through the belly wall in, in October, November at Kaywood Picnic area in uh, just into Leslie County. So anyway, this is, this is a pretty neat species. It's rare in the state, but very common in the Cumberland Mountains. Here's a real colorful one from uh, uh, the north base of Pine Mountain in Whitley County. And this is a a young one. They can be bright red or bright yellow. So much variation. Okay, that's the end of salamanders of southeastern Kentucky. I wanted to end with a picture of a black mountain salamander looking right into his face. And one of the things I like to do is go down to the Great Smoky Mountains sometimes and uh, go and hike the, uh, the Chimneys Trail at night. And there's a salamander there called the red cheek salamander that's nowhere else in the world except in the Smokies. And you can walk the trail at night and see red cheek salamanders uh, walking around on the forest floor with, with their heads sticking out of burrows. Or here's one that was that actually climbed up on a rhododendron. So uh, I think that's the end of my presentation. So I have no idea what to do now. John, great information. Excellent stuff. Uh, wow. Uh, one of the things is that uh, I think that's, that's great that you highlighted is these are things that are right here in our backyard. Uh, everybody that's on here tonight, it's in our, it's in our backyard. And so uh, that's the cool thing. I know uh, uh, with, you know, Harlan Letcher uh, and Wise County, we've got, we've got pine and black mountain in our backyard. Uh, Dustin, I, I hope you caught that uh, where he said uh, he'd pick one of them up at that, uh, that Kaywood picnic area. Uh, that's a stone's throw from you. So uh, uh, getting a lot of kudos uh, here, John. Um, Aaron says, love this presentation. Uh, Chris and Paxton said, very cool. And Dustin says, very interesting information. I'll have to agree with that. Great stuff. Hey, one of my favorite places is the Kaywood Picnic Area. I mean, it has a lot of, lot of species of salamanders. I go there every year. And Kaywood also has those uh, synchronous fireflies like they have in the Great Smokies. Okay. If you go there at night during the first 10 days in June, you can see synchronous fireflies. I didn't know that. That's a, that's a good thing. Dustin said he's, he's going to head to the Kaywood uh, picnic area and check those out. Um, we, okay. we, we do have a question here. If anybody has any questions, uh, they can type it in the chat or, or open up their microphone. But uh, uh, Aaron asks, which salamanders lay solitary eggs, not in a mask, not in a mass in a shallow spring? You know, that, what time of year? <laughs> I have seen uh, I've seen both Jefferson and spotted salamanders that that solitary eggs kind of spilled out of the female <laughs> when she was, you know, uh, ready to lay eggs, and uh, sometimes they'll lay eggs in a spring. 
Okay. But this one, it would it depend on what color the egg is and what time of year it was. And uh, this would be May. This would be in May. Um, I have no idea. Okay. Any other questions? Does she have a picture? If she has a photo. I'm. I'd be happy to look at it. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Send you a picture. All right. All right. Good deal. Good deal. Great, great information here, uh, John. Any other questions, comments? Phil, do you have anything? I don't. I really enjoyed the presentation, though. Thank you, John. Definitely. Uh, anytime. Good, good stuff. John, thank you very much for taking time out of your schedule. Uh, thank you for taking time uh, away uh, in the evening to discuss this. Uh, uh, it, it's been great. Been really good. Well, we're going to have pizza tonight <laughs> when I get home. <laughs> all right. All right. Pizza sounds good. I, th I think I've got soup. <laughs> uh, soup is good. Yeah. Anything else, Phil? No, uh, just, uh, just have a, I have a good uh, weekend. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, join us next week. Sounds good. Oh, you, you've got a good one coming up Tuesday with uh, Greg Renfro, I think. Yeah, Greg Renfro uh, with the University of Kentucky is going to be with us talking about after the hunt, what to do after the hunt. And then, Phil, you've got something on Thursday as well. Yes, uh, somebody from the Isaac Walton League is going to be uh, hopefully uh, demonstrating how to process a, a deer. So, see how that goes. Sounds good. Should be, uh, should be a great week next week. So if you know of any... Uh, uh, any hunter, hunters, specifically deer hunters, send them, uh, send them the link, and uh, those links will be coming out uh, Friday or uh, or Monday. All right. Well, John, thank you. I'm going to go. I'm going to go ahead and get off. <laughs> well, John, thank you very much, and uh, we're going to log off of here, and we'll see everybody later. Then. Bye bye. Have a great evening. Thank you.